Ange Postacoglu has revealed he told his players not to go into challenges towards the end of the Scottish Cup tie against Aula over fears they could get hurt. The Celtic boss says referee Don Robertson had lost control of the match, which saw Yusuke Iriguchi and Cal McGregor both go off with significant injuries. Ronnie Charters reports. Yosuke Iriguchi faces an extended spell on the sidelines for this. The Alawa player, Mohamed Niang, has since been charged by the SFA and the Celtic manager isn't happy. You know, I'll be honest, I told some of the lads towards the end of the game to just not bother going into tackles, to just look after themselves because I didn't want any more injuries because I just didn't feel that there was control of that environment. Sometimes players are just reckless, but that doesn't mean that that's excusable. Um, and we had a player who, you know, got a serious injury. There's a couple of others who were lucky to escape from that and... Um, you know, that's why I was disappointed with uh, with the way the night panned out. Postacoglu also confirmed that Callum McGregor will also be out long term after suffering a significant facial injury. With numbers short in midfield, new signing Matt O'Reilly could make his debut against Hearts tomorrow night. Of course, it's not nice to see like, fellow teammates get injured, but yeah, it potentially does open doors for people like myself. Um, so yeah, if, if it does happen, then it happens and... I'll do my, my utmost to be ready, like I said, and, and help the team. So, um, yeah, like I said, I, I feel like I'm ready to go physically and mentally. So, if I'm needed, I think I'll, I'll be ready. Ronnie Charters, STV News. Now, he will forever be remembered as a Celtic legend. It's just one of the tributes being paid to Wim Janssen, who's died at the age of 75. The Dutchman was only Parkhead manager for one season in 1997 when he famously stopped Rangers winning 10 in a row and brought Henrik Larsson to the club. His assistant at the time, Mardo McLeod, says he'll never be forgotten by the Celtic support. He was there for one season, but he's a Celtic great because a manager coming in from nowhere and bringing in 10 or 11 new players to stop Rangers winning 10 in a row was just a fantastic achievement. Every player had so much respect for them, uh, for him, and he, he would, you know, everyone would give their all for Wim Janssen. Tributes are being made to the former Celtic manager, Wim Janssen, who's died at the age of 75. The Dutchman, who had been living with dementia, won the Scottish League title in 1998, preventing Rangers from winning 10 in a row. Janssen spent 12 months at Celtic but made a lasting impact during his short spell in charge. As well as winning the league, he signed legendary striker Henrik Larsson and he lifted the League Cup as well. He also had an impressive playing career, winning the European Cup with Feyenoord, ironically, against Celtic back in 1970. Yeah, I've often said that for all of us, we, you know, we, we get to the privilege of, of coming through um, these clubs and you know I guess our ultimate ambition is to leave some sort of mark or some sort of legacy and uh, you know he did that in 12 months you know he's he, he, the impact he had in just one year at this football club uh, is uh, is fantastic well we're joined now by former Celtic player and assistant to Vim Janssen Murdo McLeod Murdo first of all so sorry for your loss because I know that Vim, he wasn't just a colleague of yours at Celtic, he was a deep and close friend to you and I know it's been a really tough day so we appreciate you even coming in. Yeah. How how tough has it been and shocking news today? Okay, it's been terrible. It's been, uh, no, after I met Vim in uh, October for his birthday, 75, and he was great, great form and great stories and down memory lane and everything Celtic, it was, it was fantastic. And now here we are a couple of months later and he's, he's not here. Just what was that relationship like that you had at Celtic? Because we, we saw just some of the pictures of of those celebrations of winning the League Cup and, and winning the league as well. Yeah. What what was it like working with him over? He was over great. That uh, I think he had so much respect for all the players because it was a new team he brought in, about 10, 10 new signings and Henrik as well. So, but uh, he was just not a quiet man. He would always speak to people all the time, and uh, the, the players just got in so well with him. And I think that was the reason we managed to get together as a big team and that's why we, we managed to stop 10 in a row. 
I know. And what was it that he did with that group of players to stop that elusive <laughs> ten in a row? Because I mean, that was that was a pretty pressurised situation to be coming into to try and stop Rangers winning a tenth yeah. league title. Well, it was a really strong Rangers side, and uh, when, when I, I joined Celtic a couple of months into this in the summer, and then uh, when Vim arrived, and then. I knew all about what was going to happen. It's, it's ten, 10 in a row, we've got to stop that and all that kind of thing. And Vim coming from Japan, coming all the way and, and they're coming in. But all, all the players, they, they all knew. You know, we all spoke to each other. We, we'd sit and have a good chat uh, every other day. And then you know, any problems, people would come out with their problems, you know, the way they're playing in the park or anything like that. But I think uh, everyone just got together. No, even today I had so many calls from uh, some of the players, and they're, they're all they're all gutted about what, what's happened, and because they all knew about them with his 75th birthday and his book, and it was in the book about dementia. So, but uh, all all the players, it was around them that that whole year, they worked really hard for him. They did, didn't they? And I mean, we've we've seen today just the outpouring of emotion from former Celtic players and managers and Celtic fans, just football fans. Yeah. in general. I mean, managers, they come and go now in football, Murdo. We know what it's like. Yeah. We saw Ranieri yesterday. So to, to be at Celtic for such, really, a short space of time, yeah. but to leave such a lasting impact, what does what does that say about the kind of man that Vim was? Well, I think what, what the task he was set was one, one of the hardest you're going to get, because over all the years, Tommy Burns had a fantastic Celtic team and they were getting beat by a point and all this kind of thing. It went on and year after year, and eventually Tommy was away. So then when Wim stepped in, it was just going to be, here you are, on you go, go and, go and try and stop 10 in a row. But the, the, the players, you know, just, just amazing bringing some of the players in, you know, and, and I don't think mo any of them knew each other. Mm -hmm. They just got them together and, no, the, the, the way we, Bim spoke to the players, no, it was very special and they always had a, a, a wee pat in the back for them and kept them going all the time. Yeah, you could tell that. And what what are some of the personal memories then? How will you remember Bim as the, the friend? Because you've got, you know, I'm sure you've got yeah. all the pictures and the footage to see what you did together professionally, but how will you remember him from a personal sense? Just every day, because I, I think at the time when after a, I left Celtic, I was here at BBC, work, working for BBC for, for many years, but uh, working with Vim, it was just chatting about football all day, every day. You know, when we, we got, he would go one way after the, the players had left and I'm away the other way, and then but we'd been sit, sitting inside talking about the, play, the way the players are reacting to things and you know, just spoke about all the players. And even today, having so many of the players phoning, and talking about them and the, the, the kind of friendship we had between the two of us, because they felt that that was great for them, because they felt the, the coaches are all together, they had two coaches together and all that kind of thing, and they all, they all fought, and, but they all got to know what the season was for, yep. how special it was going to be for them, and then when we went on and won the League Cup, you know, it was just... just mm -hmm a big step forward for everyone. Everyone knew then that we can win things. Absolutely. And then it was just went down to the last game of the season and St. Johnson at home and it was just, you know. You still I, remember it oh, very well. So many people and pe people were talking about it and talking about the nerves of all the fans. You know, they're all there and Henry scored after about three minutes. And then after that, everyone's biting their nails for the next. And then Harold came on and scored yeah. a great goal. And after that, it was just, it was fantastic. The rest is history, isn't it? The rest is oh, history. Oh, for, for, for someone to come in and do that, because you know, it's one of the biggest achievements in, for me in Celtic's history, yeah. to, to, to stop Rangers winning 10 in a row. And it'll, it'll always be remembered in the same way that your friendship with Vim will be, Murdo McLeod. Thank you so much for coming in and, and sharing some of those lovely memories that you have with Vim. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. Thank, Thank you. you.